Today's STEM care activity is egg parachutes. You can find a similar activity in the Science Fun with Physics 4-H project book designed by The Ohio State University. Find this project book and others at their website, ohio4h.org, or by contacting your county extension office. In today's activity, we're gonna use the following materials. Scissors, tape, a hole punch, garbage bags, some sort of marker, light string, a ruler and also a measuring tape that measures up to at least 30 inches, a stopwatch, three cups, some tissue paper, and some eggs. All right, well, let's get started making our egg cradle for our egg parachute. To start our project, we're gonna to need to create three egg cradles that hold our egg securely. To do this, we're gonna take three small cups, about seven to nine ounce size, and we're gonna put four hole punches in each cup. We wanna make sure that as we make the hole punches, we're doing so symmetrically around the opening of the cup. So you wanna go ahead and make our holes for us? Yeah. Very good job. So we have four holes symmetrical around the opening there so we can tie our strings later for our parachute to that. Now we wanna do this to the other two cups. Okay, now that we have three cups prepared, we wanna put some cushioning in our cup as well. So to do that, we are going to use tissue paper. So when you grab a piece of tissue paper, I want you to take it and before placing it into the cup, rumple it up a little bit. And we're gonna do this um, to two tissue papers per cup and then we're gonna put it inside. You wanna get that one? Okay, we'll save this one for later. All right, so now we have three egg cradles ready to go. Next, we're gonna create the parachute portion of our egg parachutes. To do this, we need several garbage bags. All right, so for this portion of the project, we're gonna use a garbage bag to make three different parachutes. Now, we wanna test a couple different variables. We're not sure at this point what size of a parachute's going to work best. What's the point of a parachute, Ben? Why do you think if we're making an egg parachute, um, what's important about keeping that egg from breaking? Uh, the the drag in the parachute. Right. So what what's like? Do you want the parachute to move really slowly, really fastly? Slowly. slowly. So the slower the parachute goes, the better. Um, the less likely that the egg will break before it hits the bottom. So we don't know what the perfect size is for that. So we're gonna test three different sizes. Now you can pick a, uh, the sizes that you want to for this, but we decided to make a 10 by 10 inch, a 20 by 20 inch, and a 30 by 30 inch parachute. Now to do that, we'll wanna measure, and for 10 by 10, that's pretty easy because we can use a regular ruler for that. So we're, here, we wanna find the 10 inch mark on the edge. So where is that gonna be? Now, the nice thing about one garbage bag, we can actually make several parachutes. So we don't wanna cut through both sides. So the first side to cut would be along this angle here so we can break this in half. Does that make sense? So then we can use the other side for a different parachute. So you wanna go ahead and cut along this seam. All right, so now that we've cut this side, we can pull this away. And we can cut our remaining portion. So let's cut along this angle here. We go. We'll use the rest of this garbage bag to cut our 20 or 30 inch, but you'll probably need a second bag um, for your third parachute. 
Now that we've cut our three different parachute sizes, 30 inches, 20 inches, and 10 inches, we need to cut some string to attach the parachute to our egg cradle cup. And we also uh, need to put some holes in the parachute so that we can tie it to. Okay, so let's start by cutting our string. So here we're just using really light kite string for this project. And we wanna cut string about 20 inches long, somewhere around that, can be a little bit longer, um, as long as each of your strings are consistently the same length. In this case, one easy way, um, let's- Is we, to model it off of your 20 inch one. You could do that. You could also use your, um, I'll show you a trick. In this case, we wouldn't be making 20 inches, we'd be making 24 inches. So a ruler's 12 inches long. Here we go, that's okay. A ruler's 12 inches long. So if I take the string and wrap it around twice, that's gonna be a total of what? 20. 24. So in this case, 12 plus 12 is 24. So we can snip this and we'll make 24 inch long pieces of string. So you wanna try the next one? Sure. Okay, so if we have three total parachutes and each parachute needs four strings, how many total strings will we need to cut? Four. 12. 12, 12. right, we'll need 12 <laughs> total strings to cut for our parachutes. All right, so, let's see, I already have a few of them cut here. We can add some more in a little bit. But the next part that I wanna show you is how to attach your strings to your parachute. All right, so we're gonna put holes in the corners of our parachute. Now the hole punch doesn't work very well for that because it's made of plastic. So the better way to do it is with something like a pencil. So when we do it, we wanna, don't wanna do it too close to the edge. You wanna put it about an inch inside the corner of the parachute, so. Now that we have holes in our parachute, we can go ahead and do the same thing to our 30 inch. We're gonna tie a string to the end of each one. For your kids at home, you may need um, an adult's help for this part of it if you're not very good at tying. We're gonna do this to the end of all of our parachutes. Okay, so our completed parachute will have string on each corner. Okay, so what do you think we need to do next? We've got the parachute and the strings. We have to tie it to the other. We have to tie it to the egg cradle cup, right, because it's not gonna protect the egg if it's not attached to the egg cradle cup. All right, so let's clear a few of our items. On this step, we're going to connect our parachutes with our egg cradle cups. So, we have four symmetrical holes in our cup and we have four um, strings attached to the edges of our parachute uh, plastic here. So as you're thinking through the process of tying this on, you'll also wanna pay attention that you're you're going in order of this because if you don't, what could happen? If we kind of just- It would get all tangled. It would get all tangled, right? And then it wouldn't fall well if the parachute won't open and our egg will crack when it hits the ground. So we wanna make sure we pay attention to that. So if we started here with this string and this hole, and we'll just have to think as we go around and add the other strings. Okay, so much like you did with the plastic, you're gonna use this end of the string to tie it into the cup. And if you need help, I'm happy to, to help you with that. Did you do it twice? Mm hmm Great. All right, how about you work on the next one? So if you've Can got you that- on this one? Yeah, so yours will go through that and mine will go through this, good. Okay, for our last step, we are going to, we've got our 30 inch parachute constructed with the cup, our 20 inch parachute with its cup, and our 10 inch parachute with its cup cradle. So, we, and we had already placed two rumpled up 
tissue, pieces of tissue paper in the bottom of each cup. Now we can go ahead and carefully place an egg in each cup. There we go, go ahead, sit it in carefully, kind of nestle it in there. All right, and in here. Okay, before we move on, I wanna put some tape, maybe like in a cross pattern, on top of each egg to keep it from moving. So if you like where each of those eggs are, you can go ahead and if you, you, want, you can move around the tissue paper a little bit if you like, if you want it to surround the egg like a nest or however you think it'll work best. And we're gonna put some more tissue paper on top so it's okay at this point um, to leave the top there. press too hard as you're putting the tape on, right? Or what could happen? You break it. You could crack the egg before we even get to drop it. Now, once you have it taped on top, and we'll do this for all three of them, you're going to rumple up two more pieces of tissue paper and then put another cross over the very top of the cup. Okay, now put, put the tape on top. While you're doing that one, I'll do it to this one. Okay, to test our egg parachutes and see how they do, we wanna find a spot where we can drop them that's at least 10 feet off the ground. You can try a couple different places. Maybe you live um, in a home that has an outside staircase that allows you to do it. If you want to do it in an inside staircase, just make sure you put down a couple extra garbage bags so in case the egg breaks, you don't want to get any egg on your floor or carpet. Um, if you live near a playground, playgrounds are perfect if there's a large jungle gym that you can uh, get to the top of and drop those off of there. So anything that's about 10 feet in height, um, you might need a, an adult's help to help you find a, a location to do this. Finally, we're not only looking at the egg to see um, if it, ha it sustains any damage as we drop it um, and to test our design and maybe improve and make uh, new types of parachutes. We also wanna test the time it takes for our parachute to fall. So what was it you said earlier? Do, what do you think will have the safest landing for our egg? A longer fall or a shorter fall? A longer fall a longer fall. So make sure when you go to test your parachutes that you bring a stopwatch or maybe an adult with a phone, they could use the stopwatch built into their smartphone to time the fall from the time you release it until it hits the ground. Typically, the longer the fall, the softer the landing and therefore we would assume the um, more protected and less cracked of an egg we would receive at the end. You ready to go test it? Yeah. your parachutes, make sure you make a prediction about which one you think will do best. Conduct your tests and then go back and see if your prediction was correct. Our predictions aren't always correct, but that's okay. Uh, it's part of the learning process. When we let go of our parachutes, they fall to the earth due to a force known as gravity. Gravity is a natural force that pulls all objects towards our earth. So toys, balls, anything that we drop falls due to gravity. When we drop our parachute, if it unfurls, it's also creating air resistance. So as it opens up, there's a great amount of surface area that is uh, working against the air, causing friction, slowing it down. Typically, the larger the parachute, the greater the air resistance, and therefore the slower the fall towards the earth. You can test out other shapes of parachutes like circles or hexagons. Um, you can also try different sizes to see which one does better. 
Again, typically the slower the fall, the safer our egg and the less likely we will be to break it. Thank you.